Yes, I was thinking. <laughs> Hello. Hi guys, welcome to Gary and Lisa. I am Lisa. I'm Gary. Guess what? Our top story today is five top reasons to do a 1031 exchange in real estate. Right, you might be wondering what is a 1031 exchange? That would probably be a lot of your first questions. The 1031 exchange is actually an IRS guideline that you can transfer like property from uh, investment, commercial, business property into another like property. So this does not apply to your primary residence. So that is transferring a property so you don't have to pay the capital gains tax, state and federal, that you might have to pay when you sell a property. That's true. Excellent description. The number one reason for doing a 1031 exchange is estate planning. It's unbelievable the way you can change your estate plan using a 1031 exchange. Let's say you had a property, single family residence, apartment building, commercial building, doesn't really matter. You can sell that property in a 1031 exchange, exchange it into another property, right? You don't pay any taxes on that in the 1031 exchange. And then upon your death, your heirs inherit that property on a stepped up basis. That means they get an appraisal at the time of your death on what the property is worth and they don't have to pay any taxes on it. That's just an unbelievable advantage in the 1031 exchange. Right, so you might want to do a 1031 exchange and, and step up to a different kind of property that you think your heirs might use better or need or something else, you know, at the, as you get older. Yeah, it could be anything. You could go from a single family house to an apartment building to a commercial building to just about anything. Let's say you want to do storage units. Anything's out there available as long as it's in kind of the production, money making type investment property. Nobody invests money in property really to lose money. Now you can lose money. There's no guarantee you're going to make money, but this is just an unbelievable advantage in the 1031 exchange, especially when you're talking about estate planning. Right. The number two reason is appreciation, especially in this market. You might want to be taking some profit you have from one property or maybe moving it from a multifamily to a vacation home or vice versa. So you want to take some appreciation off the table and move it into another property. So that is number two reason why you might want to do a 1031 exchange. You know, we look at homes and prices and real estate and look at all things to do with real estate every single day. And the investments that really have my attention these days are the triple net leases on fast food places like McDonald's, like Hardee's, like Chick-fil-A. I mean, the list is almost endless because even during the pandemic, those places were busy. They never slowed down, ever. I don't see them slowing down in the future. I think everybody's just like, hey, let's have dinner. Let's go in a drive through Yeah, well, they just opened a Canes here near us here in Ventura County, the first one here. And it has been aligned around the building for, I don't know, like a month now it's been open. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, these companies that are starting out like Canes and, you know, rapid growth, quite a bit different than an in and out which is a private company, uh, they're not for selling their land leases. However, I did see one in Fort Worth where there was an in and out burger that was selling the land lease or the triple net lease. And that was just like, wow, that's wow. unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, what's going to happen did there? Did you make an offer on that? <laughs> <laughs> Here today, gone tomorrow for sure. Uh -huh. So number three reason is cash flow. It is. Cash flow is, if you've got a property that's underperforming right now, that's in your portfolio, just 1031 exchange it into a property that isn't underperforming. One that maybe will perform better in the future, just like I was talking about, a triple net lease to a fast food place. There's a lot of different things. I mean, you've got all the way from, you know, shade tree mechanics that, you know, are trying to raise money to single family houses, apartment buildings, they all are considered investment properties in the 1031 exchange umbrella. Right, and I mean, I don't think you'd ever want to necessarily sell one that has a booming cash flow. I guess you might, but I think it usually works in reverse. You want to take your 
money and roll it into something that's going to generate more cash flow for you. Yeah, what do they call that? The proverbial cash cow? Hang on to the cash cow. Yeah, the cow. Yeah, we always <laughs> like those. Don't we all like those? And in our market, the cash cow cash flow usually has something to do with down payment. <laughs> it does. It does. But the last year, I mean, the prices are up substantially. So even though the rents are up substantially too, the home prices are up right along with them. So anybody that bought a year ago was in great condition. Right. The number four reason to do a 1031 exchange is depreciation. Now, you know, if you have investment property, you can depreciate that property over X amount of years. And at some point you run out of depreciation. But when you sell the property, the, the tax man has his handout for 25% recapture of that. So you might want to uh, do a 1031 exchange to offset how that depreciation is going to hit your bottom line. Yeah, it depends on what state you live in. Some states are higher tax rates than other. We just happen to live, I think, in one of the highest, the great state of California. So that could be an issue for sure. So always check with your CPA, your legal counsel, everybody. Check with everybody before you make a decision like this. However, a 1031 exchange an investment property works out very well, especially if you, if you have a gain. Let's say you bought a property and this happens occasionally 10 years ago and it's worth the same amount of money now that you paid for 10 years ago. 1031 exchange might not be the way to go. You'll want to check with your CPA and legal professional on that because if you have, you know, depreciation, things like that, it could be an issue. However, most of the people today have equity. I would say 99.9% .9 of everybody has an equity in a property they've owned 10 years. That's right. And number five is diversification. So like he was just hitting on. Yes, I was. You know, talking about the fast food joints and the in and out burger that, you know, I saw in Fort Worth that they were selling, you know, the ground and then they were going to lease it back on the triple net lease. Those are just so exciting. I mean, they're just everywhere. I would pick a fast food place you like, though. I mean, there's some, some we don't like and we don't visit, and there's some we visit more often than others. So just go with what feels right to you when you're coming to, to diversify your portfolio using a 1031 exchange. Right, and that's where you might want to diversify your multifamily into a vacation home, vacation home into multifamily, or an Airbnb, or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe you have a family business property you want to sell and transfer it into multifamily. So all of these things uh, are possible. It is, and one thing about it, it seems like right now is probably a pretty good time to get a deal on an apartment building. As all the other sectors have kind of bubbled and, and happening and gone up, multifamily seems to be lagging behind the market. Well, they get offers around here on the little two, four unit buildings are flying off the shelf here. Oh yeah, anything that you can get <laughs> residential, you know, one, to, one to four units that are just absolutely on fire. Right, because that's a whole other thing. You get residential financing on one to four. When you get to five, it's you know the different kind of financing. But we're not talking about that today. No, we're not talking about commercial loans. We're no. just talking about 1031 exchanges, which is absolutely an excellent idea for you and your real estate. So there's a couple of boundaries, timelines when you do a 1031 exchange. The first one is you need to identify the possible properties that you want to buy within 45 days of closing the property that you're selling. So you have 45 days, you need to do that in writing and turn them into to the QI, which is the qualified intermediary. And the best way to describe it is it works like when you transfer a 401k. When you've transferred a 401k, you leave a job and you move from one to the other, you never touch the money. It goes from 401k A to 401k B and you never touched it. Well, that's exactly how the 1031 exchange works and they call that middleman a qualified intermediary or a QI. So you have to turn it in in writing, your, your properties, your potential purchase prop properties to the intermediary. That's right, and if you are transferring your 401k and you do touch the money, what happens? You get taxed. Yes, you've got to pay the tax on it like ordinary income. Yes, same thing happens here. You <laughs> yes. have to pay the tax if you touch it, so you don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. Hands uh, off. Hands off. Uh, the second uh, hard timeline is the 180 days. So you must close on the property that you're buying within 180 days of closing the property that you're sell selling. So you close the property. You identify some potential properties you want to buy in 45 days, 
and then you have 180 days to close the property. And those are hard deadlines. Uh, they do not move. It is the IRS. <laughs> yes, yes. Those deadlines come from close of escrow, so it's public right. record. Everybody knows the date it closed, and everybody yep. knows the price it closed for. Right. So it's not like, oh gosh, let's fudge a day or two here. That doesn't happen. No. No, no. Fudge a day or two here, all the taxes are due. Right. So absolutely, this is critical information when you're doing a 1031 exchange. Right. So I just have a couple of stats I thought I'd go over real quick from April of 2020 to April of 2021. And uh, the one of the most exciting ones is the median sold price is up 24.44%. The average sold price is up 38.63%. And these are skewed somewhat because April did slow down last year. We were quiet and well, the, everything got shut down. We were um, locked down. Locked down. <laughs> Um, we're coming back, Ho hopefully on June 15th, we get to come back in earnest. And then um, the average days on market went from 49 to 29 days, but it's actually down. I've seen some things as low as eight days on the market. So those are some up-to-date stats. They are. Yes. And we have them. We're up-to-date. Now you're up-to-date. Yes. So if you have any questions about real estate, uh, we love to answer questions. We love to talk about real estate. You can always find us. And visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. That's a wrap.